In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I make quick edits for landscape photos using Lightroom on the iPad. So I'm gonna keep this video pretty quick this time. Uh, I've got three photos that I wanna take you through. We've got this nice scene at the Fourth, uh, Fourth River. We've got the Queensferry Bridge. This is just north of Edinburgh, lovely spot. We've got this shot from Mull. And then we've got this shot from somewhere in the Trossachs. I think this might be on Loch Lomond. Um, lovely, lovely scenes. In fact, let's start with this one because there's quite a few things that we can do just to brighten this up. Now, last time I did an iPad video, I just used the slider with my fingers and I had some complaints of why wasn't I using the Apple Pencil. Well, I'm gonna use the Apple Pencil for this one just to make it easier to see maybe where the sliders go. But to be honest, most of the editing I do in Lightroom on the iPad, I do just use my finger. I'm a little bit more accurate on the sliders. Anyway, let's start off with this just by slightly upping that exposure, bring down those highlights and slightly up the shadows. Uh, if you just touch the image, you can see before and after. And so already you can see that we've sort of balanced out that exposure a little bit more, particularly in those clouds in the distance, which were looking a little bit vibrant. Let's go into our color tab because um, color is gonna be really important. This was a nice sunrise scene. I wanna warm it up ever so slightly and I wanna bring up that tint a little bit as well. Not too much because I wanna keep this looking pretty natural to how it was. And um, I think this is still capturing that uh, quite nicely. But the most color work that we're gonna do is in the color mix. This is when we can uh, change our hue, saturation and luminance. And that is what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna start off with the yellow channel. So we've got a lot of yellow in these trees in the distance. Um, but right now they're kind of, a, there's a lot of yellowy green going on. And I wanna grab that yellow and make it much more of an orangey yellow, much deeper color. This was taken in, I think, November. So these, these were really rich autumn colors that were on display at the time. And I really wanna try and emphasize that as much as possible. So I'm gonna bring that down quite a bit, minus 68 or oh, minus 70. Play around about luminance, maybe boost it up just a little bit and maybe increase that saturation. And I'm gonna do this, well, not the same, but similar with the orange. Now, if you go too far with the orange slider, very quickly goes pink, hot pink. There's no hot pink like that in the landscape. So a very subtle approach is required here. So let's reset it back to zero and then we take it from there. And I think minus 27, is actually a little bit too much, minus 20-ish. That is pretty much where I wanna leave it. Again, I wanna bring up that luminance. If I just pulse that up and down, pay attention to sort of the bushes in the distance, look at the difference that makes in just sort of bringing those out of the hillside. Again, you don't wanna to go too far, somewhere around plus 15, and maybe up that saturation just a few points. Already, I think this is looking really, really nice. There's probably not much more I'd want to do to this. If we look at our before and our after, so much more rich autumn tones in there. I really like how this is looking. I'm going to quickly go into the uh, purples and I'm going to drag that hue down because I do think there's quite a lot of purple in that sky. And indeed there is, that sky is now a really nice crisp blue. Um, but speaking of which, we could just go and just turn that blue channel down a little bit. Not too much because it goes green, but just a bit to keep it away from being too purple and actually making sure that it is a nice rich blue tone. Might darken that down ever so slightly in the luminance. I really, really like how this looks overall. So I don't think there's anything more I want to do to this in terms of its color and its exposure. I do just want to check that it is dead straight. I think that is absolutely spot on. The last thing that I do wanna do though, now this, sometimes I'd spend a bit more time in, in taking these photos into Photoshop, getting rid of small bits of debris. We can see these little bits of plants around, around in the water that kind of, I find a little bit distracting. The only thing that I'm going to do in here though, is up here. Now, excuse the fact that it isn't loading properly. It does look a little bit low resolution. It's because I've just moved into a new house and um, I'm currently tethered on 3G, not even 4G, certainly not 5G. My internet isn't installed and so nothing is loading properly. Anyway, enough of my complaints. This tree branch intersects slightly with this 
big old tree that we've, that we've actually been photographing. And I don't want that. I want them to be separate entities. So I'm just going to, with a small brush, I'm just going to brush in that and it's going to clone it out. Oh, I might need to do a bit here as well. Done. Now we go back and now they're two separate entities. Tiny little thing. You can do it in Lightroom. You don't need to take that over into Photoshop. Dead easy. So I think this photo is done. Let's look at our before. Yeah, it's nice, but we brought up some shadow detail on the tree and we've made those colors really, really pop. This is now a beautiful looking sunrise scene. Okay, let's move on to our next one. This is our shot from Mull. Um, now when I'm doing quick edits, and I love using the iPad for quick edits because you're on, sometimes you're on location, or maybe you're in a cafe. This is not a device for you to spend, sit down and maybe spend hours trying to do the most, we've got sirens, of course we have, trying to do the most intricate edits possible. The iPad is great for quickly going through some shots. Maybe you're actually out taking them and this is how you're quickly doing some processing. And so when I am, using the iPad for some quick things, I will rely on those shortcuts. And one of the best shortcuts that I do like to use is using really good presets. Don't ever be afraid of presets. It doesn't mean it's cheating. The only thing I don't like with presets is just one click applying and then considering your photo done because then you are just applying someone else's presets. So what I like to do is use it as a bit of a jumping off point, find a good color toning preset that gets you some of the way there and then you apply your edits over the top. And that is exactly what we're going to do now. Uh, I've got a whole pack of Visco presets that I really love. Get some really gorgeous filmic effects from all of these. Um, plenty of them. We can use some black and white ones too. But the one that I've already had a little play around with and I think works really well in this scene, it's one of my favorites, is this A6 Raw Half. Um, I'm just going to press Done. And if we look at before and after, it's not a huge change. It's not done anything wild with the colors, but we've got that bit more of a cinematic uh, fade to the, the picture. Those greens have gone a bit more dark and emeraldy rather than yellowy. I think it looks really, really nice. I'm gonna start off just by straightening it up because I want that castle wall to be nice and straight, something like that. And actually, I think I'm gonna apply a crop as well, because on the bottom left, we've got this rock with these very, very vibrant yellow lichens on it. And I find that a little bit distracting. In fact, these ones as well. And so I think I'm gonna try and lean into that kind of cinematic filmic feel that that preset has given us. And I'm gonna go 16.9 with this, bring it up. And so I'm paying attention to my composition in that I want this castle to be in the right thirds. And of course it's reflection and I'm trying to eliminate some of these distracting, really vibrant rocks down here by bringing it up, bringing in our frame so that we've got these nice rocks in our foreground. And of course, we're not cutting off any of that reflection. We've still got all of this beautiful sky and the mountain there. And I just think that, apply that. I think that is a much nicer looking image already just by making those two changes. Okay, let's carry on. Um, so one of the things that I've noticed is that this left-hand side of the sky is quite a lot brighter than the right-hand side. So I'm just going to try and correct that a little bit with a linear filter. I'm going to drag that across, just something like this. And I'm going to use my fingers on my exposure because I have a bit more control. And just gradually bring this down until it looks like it matches a bit more. I think about there, it looks great. But while we've got this tool out, I'm going to put in another just down here. I want to darken, create a bit of a natural looking vignette to these rocks because I use these kinds of tools to help draw the eye into the right parts of the scene because your eye is naturally drawn to the brighter parts of the scene. And so if you want to darken areas around here, that is going to naturally allow your viewer's eye to go to the brighter spots. In this case, it's the castle, it's the reflection, it's these rocks, it's this lovely mountain, not this kind of empty rocky area down to the bottom left. So, okay, let's go into our exposure tab. And I think we can probably bring those shadows up just a little bit. I wanna bring those whites up. I'll just give the image a little bit more pop. I'm not gonna to touch the highlights because I think highlight wise, it's pretty well balanced. And actually, I think that's all I'm gonna do in the exposure tab, just those tiny little tweaks. In the color tab, however, I'm gonna do similar to what we did before. I'm actually gonna skip white balance because I think the white balance on this is pretty much fine. 
but I do want to give it a little bit more of a look. I, I want to kind of play around. So again, I want to get that yellow slider because there's a lot of yellow in this brickwork, but it looks very kind of greeny yellow, a little bit sickly. So I just want to kind of correct those sickly tones by dragging that yellow down here. And as I do, let's just pulse that so you can kind of see it changing. Look how that castle wall and the mountain behind it goes from that kind of sickly greeny yellow into more of an orangey tone. And pay attention to how it also helps our brickwork really stand out against the green of those trees before it all kind of blended in together. Now, we haven't gone far, minus 31. We've not tried to make it an orange scene. So I think it's looking really nice. Also, if we just up that luminance, again, I'm just gonna pulse it so you can see what it's doing. We're gonna bring that up too. Maybe just increase saturation slightly. I think this is already looking so much better. It's not a lot I wanna to do to this because it's such a natural scene already. I think if we go too far, it's gonna start looking a little bit weird. It is important, I think, to exercise subtlety in landscapes. But one thing I wanna do is emphasize that reflection. I'm gonna do that with a brush tool. I'm gonna to use a smaller brush. And I'm just gonna start off by painting it in onto that reflection. That can be very rough. Doesn't need to be an exact, an exact mask. And I'm gonna up that exposure just to make it a bit more visible. It's quite dark. I'm gonna up those whites and I'm gonna to go to my effects panel and I'm gonna up that clarity. And as I do, look how much more detail comes out in the water. It looks so nice. But if you applied clarity to the whole scene, it would look really crunchy and weird. But we're just painting it in selectively on that water. And I do think it makes a huge difference to our scene. And in fact, I think that that is pretty much all I wanna do. I really, really like how this looks. If we look before, it's all a little bit sickly tones, hasn't got a lot of pop. And it just kind of looks like a, a nice snap, a decent snap, nothing too great, decent in a photo. Now it's got a much more cinematic feel. The light on it is great. Those colors really pop off the screen. I'm really, really happy with that. So I think I'm gonna consider this one done and we're gonna move on to our last image and it's this sunset scene. This was a glorious golden sunset, but the white balance that I shot in I didn't really pay that much attention to because I shoot in RAW. And the benefit of shooting RAW is that you've got complete control over your white balance in post, and that is the same on the iPad. So let's start off before I do anything in exposure by going into my color tab, and we're gonna increase that temperature to quite a bit. But the thing that's really gonna help this is the tint. We're gonna take that a long way into our purples, into our magentas, and look how that has come to life. That now just looks gorgeous, beautiful tones. Maybe warm it up a little bit more as well. This is suddenly the vivid sunset that I really saw. It's so, so nice. And that is just two sliders we've changed. And look how that has transformed that picture before. Cloudy, but otherwise a bit of a nothing shot. Suddenly, boom. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, cool. Right, our exposure does need to come up a little bit. I'm gonna bring a little bit more, there we go. Bring our highlights down in the sky, maybe up those shadows, but I don't wanna go too far with the shadows at this point. Now clearly, the bottom half of the scene is a bit too dark and the sky in the top half is a little bit too bright. So kind of, this is an image of two halves. We can edit it separately very easily for that reason by using our linear tools. So I can literally drag up this filter like that. And now everything that's red is where our edits will be applied. Everything that isn't is where they won't. So perfect, that means I can go back into our exposure and I can drag it up and look, it's only affecting the beach. It's not affecting the whole scene. So now our sky isn't getting overexposed. We're just bringing up some of those details on the beach. So I'm bringing it up by about plus 70. I think that looks quite nice. I'm gonna boost those whites a little bit as well. You might notice that every time I touch one of these sliders, I do kind of pulse it. And the reason is, is that you don't always know exactly how it's going to look. And I just find that just by grabbing a slider, playing around, seeing what it does, kind of gives me that inspiration of where I actually want to put it. So I tend to do that with every slider that I touch and is, I think, quite a good habit for you to try yourself. 
I'm gonna now bring in another one. This one is for the top half of the image. We're gonna drag it down. So this is just gonna be about editing that sky. I'm gonna slightly bring the exposure down, slightly bring down those highlights and up that contrast a little bit. And that has just given our sky a little bit more of a boost and it's brought those highlights under control. Done. Our before, our after. I mean, <laughs> the difference is huge and it's only taken us a few minutes. It's very, very easy to get great shots. Um, okay, let's just straighten it up because I don't think it is particularly straight. No, it's not. We want to straighten it with the bridges, make sure that it is uh, those vertical pillars are completely upright. About that, I think it looks great. So I don't want to use any like filters, presets, any um, uh, any like default tools on this because I really like how it looks. But there is one thing that I want to change. We've just straightened it up against this pillar here, this left one. But this one on the right now looks like it's slightly leaning. And I think that's just because of the wide angle lens I was using. We've got a little bit of distortion, but we can fix that too using the geometry tool. We can get this uh, guided upright thing and we can draw one over our um, upright here and then another one over our upright here. Just slightly put it in line like that. And now both of them are perfectly in line. We've corrected that image our before or after. You can see how it kind of has corrected. Absolutely perfect. It's done a great, great job. The last thing I want to do on this image though is just give these reflections on the sand a little bit more of a boost. I'm going to do that with another local adjustment. This time it's a radial tool. I'm just going to drag in this big circle and I'm going to up those whites. Again, if we pulse that up and down, you can see now how much more light is falling on there. We're going to go quite far, plus 40. Also going to up that clarity, because again, as we do, look how much more detail really pops out. So I'm going to go quite far, plus 20 with the clarity, but I'm going to bring down the texture, because what I don't want is that kind of crunchiness that you get with clarity. I don't want all of these tiny stones to suddenly look really sharp and jagged. I want it to stay um, vibrant and vivid, but not too gritty. So I'm kind of trying to balance out that extra clarity by bringing down our texture slightly. And actually, I think that has done a really nice job. So there's no a lot I think I want to do. I'm just going to check though our color grading tool. Now this allows you to selectively tone the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And in this instance, I think I can pop in some extra magenta some bluey magenta down into our shadows as we do. Oh, it does look good. Not too far. Maybe 20 on the saturation into those shadows. And in the highlights, I'm going to add some orange to really help boost that sky. And you can go quite far because this is already such a vibrant sunset scene. So I've gone saturation 38 with that. And I think that makes all the difference to really bring this scene together into this gorgeous sunset, beautiful cloud formations, lovely reflections on these wet rocks. Let's look at our before. It's nothing. It's blue. It's cold. There's not a lot of color. There's not a lot of vibrance. And we've made it look like this with just a few minutes in Lightroom on the iPad. I'm really, really pleased. And I hope that has been helpful to see how I would go about making these edits on the iPad. If you have enjoyed this video, then do please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.